Welcome to today's webinar with the title Basics of Printed Circuit Board Production Part 4. High Density Interconnect Printed Circuit Boards or in short form HDI PCBs. I am Andreas Schilp, your host of today's World Electronic Circuit Board Technology Webinar and I would like to welcome you. The speaker of today's webinar is our expert Michael Kress, Michael Kress from our Technical Project Management at World Electronic Circuit Board Technology. Welcome, Michael. And now I wish you lots of fun and new information. So, hello from my side. And now we will start. We start with the agenda. That can, ah, okay. Um, we start with the agenda. At first, I will show you the high density interconnect. PCBs, production processes for microwire, standard stackups and application, and the limits of today from HDI boards. In the second step, I will show you a next generation if we can do more. And for this, production processes, standard stackups, design rules, application samples, and uh, the advantage and the challenge of this type. And at last, a uh, short summary about this one. But at first, um, at first we will start a short survey, which fine pitch components do you use at the moment? So I have started the poll. Please make your choice. Choice is correct. <laughs> Okay, we've got forty percent already. So participation is very good today. We will wait another few seconds. <clears throat> okay, so now I will close the poll and show the result. So we can see that more or less uh, we have a third with 0.8 millimeter, another third 0.5 millimeter, another third um, using 0.4 millimeter, and some participants already need the use of 0.3 and even less. Thank you. Thank you for this one. In this graphic, I would like to give you an idea to uh, price range it and the different variants of HGI structures. At first, it is every time it's an eight layer. And uh, at first we have a product, a product with one pressure and we use an eight layer with microwire layers from top to the first inner layer and from bottom side to the, in this part from Lennon, uh, for layer seven. In the next, we have a double lamination. Every board, they get a uh, pressure from the first pressure with inner layers, and you can use barrel wires or micro wires from top to layer two and layer two to layer three and so on. And a lot of combinations about micro wire sections and barrel wire sections. And on the last time, you can make a trouble lamination to use more uh, more integrated connections in the PCB. For all these structures, the variance of pressure base cost at 100%. And the next steps for use more and more drilling processes and plating processes, the cost goes higher and higher about this one. And so in the last variation of the three triple lamination, we get a price level from 175 degrees if we based the first six layer, eight layer with one microwire layer. In the next, I will show you the standard stack ups about this one. Here we use uh, two cores in the inner layer 
and then we pressure on the outer layer the microwires. And this goes up to eight layers with three lamination processes and all the between layer stack ups, standard stack ups, you can look on our website and you can download it on this. For my side, you can look on our website, the microwire design rules too. And for me, it's very important to show you the standard microwire. The standard microwire pad size is today 300 microns and the electrical thickness 58 up to 70 microns. And the final pet di uh, final diameter from the microwire drill hole is the end from 100 microns. On the next fall, I show you uh, part of microwire BGA pitches from 0.5 millimeter. And for the PCP manufacturing is very good the variation one. Why? The BGA solder pad for the footprint from the component is 300 microns. The solder mass clearance is 50 microns. And the line and spacing on all layers is 100 micron. Perhaps you can use on the inner layer 75 microns. And this is very good for production with very good yield and very good pricing. On the next level, if you use a BGA pitches from 0.04 millimeter, so we get the next level. Here we use a smaller pad size. The pad size goes less to 275 microns, and the solder pad, the solder mass clearance goes to 35 microns, and the bridge from the solder mass is less than 70 microns. So I will show you a, small, uh, a short calculation. So you see on the right side, very easy to calculate the pitches. So the solder mass bridge, every time we use 70 micron and the solder mass clearance, 35 microns on left and right side. In summary, we get a pet to pet distance from 114 micron, plus the pet size from the design, perhaps 275 microns. We get in summary 450 microns. Here you see for a BGA component with a pitch from 0.4 millimeter is not enough. What we can do, the solder bridge we reduce it from 70 micron to 50 micron. And then we can organize a design for BGA component 0.4 millimeter as well. So, so now, um, what we need uh, is for small components, for BGA components to perhaps 0.35 millimeters, what we need to be done for further reduce the pet diameter, but first for this short survey in follow. How much would reducing the pet size from 275 microns to 275 microns help in your layout design for PCBs? Thanks a lot. So please make your choice. I start with the poll. You should see the blue screen with four possible answers. Okay. So we are already past 40% participation. More than 60% participation, so another few seconds. The call and then I will close it and show the result. Okay. So
So this is the result. Um, Seventy percent um, stated that it helps strongly. Seventeen percent helps very strongly, and thirteen just for thirteen percent helps less. So thanks, Rose. So thank you from my side. From the next generation HDI boards, we use any layer technology. So I will show you in the next fall the process. But at first, we use every time very thin materials. Why? I show you before the solder mass is the limit for solder mass bridges and clearance. What we can do is to reduce the drill holes make smaller and if we make the drill holes for microwire smaller the same we make the pcb thinner so we use very thin rigid fr4 materials and make build-ups in the any layer technology and for all microwires and uh, microwire copper filling processes we get a very thin copper thickness to edge very fine line layouts with 75 microns line and space. So at first I will show you the process about this one. At first we start with a core. Maximum thickness is 100 microns. Better is a little bit less, perhaps 60 microns. Then we drill the microwire with a laser drilling process into this core and make after them the copper filling process to contact uh, to connect the layer two to the layer three. And then we etch the inner layers about this one. If we use a four layer, then we pressure on the outer layer. If we use a six layer, then we make the same inner layer process too. And then we get on the outer layer. So we make the same processes about laser drilling from top to layer two. And then we go to a copper filling process, fill the laser, microwire laser holes with copper. And after the copper plating process, we get uh, end copper thickness about 25 up to 30 microns. And here we can produce 75 microns line and spacing on a tent and edge processes very good. The build-up, the standard build-ups, you can look on our homepage. Here you can find it. You can use the four layer, six layer, or eight layers. And you can use stacked or stacked microwires on each layer. And every time we use FR4 materials with a TG 150 degrees and a core material on the inner layer, 60 or 100 microns thickness. So, and the final thickness about this one, if you use a four layer PCB with one two bead one, is smaller than, is thinner than 0.35 millimeters. If you use a six layers, it's 0.35 millimeter. And the end layer is smaller than, uh, is thinner than 0 0.2, uh, 0.35 millimeters. Ah, oh, it's right. <laughs> I see a fall. The, the eight layer is 0.6 millimeters smaller than, and the six layer is 0.4. Here we have a, a different PCB signals about in this table. So, very important for the design rules is to use the line and spacing with only microwires with 75 microns line and spacing. And the minimum pet diameter is smaller than in our standard, so we can use this in 225 microns. And the finished diameter of the laser drilled microwire we can use with 85 microns. And this all is a possibility to go less with smaller PGA components in 0.35 millimeters. And all other with solder mast is our standard now actually. These parameters 
you can use not only in BGA component designs, you can use this in a land pad um, for components with 0.01 or 0.1005 components is possible too about this one. So now I will show you uh, uh, EDA viewing about a four layer PCB. And here you can see the stacked micro wires directly in the wire pad from the footprint of the component. And you can connect it from layer top to layer bottom with only micro wires. Don't use mechanical plated through hole wires. So here we are a better, uh, want a better um, size of uh, the design, and we can use it with a thinner copper uh, thicknesses about on all layers. I will show you the design parameters about this one. For BGA 0.35 millimeter, you use a BGA head diameter from 225 microns. The solder mask goes down to 55 microns and the solder mask clearance is the maximum limit 35 microns. The laser built microwire is 85 microns and you can use line space with 75 microns. On the right side, you see a micro section about this one and here you can connect it from the top to the bottom side it's completely laser drilled microwires with copper plated processes. And you see here a very thin electrical about top to layer two with 35, 34 microns and with maximum 25 up to 30 microns copper thickness on all layers. And this is the possibility if you use smaller components in the BGA with 0.4 millimeter. In the next level, if you use uh, 0.3 millimeter, then we need more smaller materials. Today, we have only flexible materials about this one. And these materials are more thinner than the FF4 materials. And here we can reduce the parameters too. And so we can go to the BGA patch diameter up to 180 microns. The solder mask web is every time the same. So here we use 50 microns too. And the solder mask clearance, the same with 35 microns too, as the FF4 variant. The laser drilled micro wire diameter, we can go less from 85 microns up to 60 microns. And so here we can use smaller BGA pads. And every time the copper thickness are near the same is the same with 25 up to 20 uh, uh, 30 microns thickness. And so we can use in the layout design 75 microns line and spacing on all layers. So now for me, very interesting is to know. For use for, for from you, have you sent present PCBs with a total thickness of less than 0.5 millimeters in your assembly processes? Thanks a lot. Okay, so Tom is started. Please make your choice. We passed already 40% participation. So I'll give you another five seconds roundabout. So that's an easy question. So we come to an end. And this is the result. 13% yes, happens more often lately. 27% yes, but they are still isolated cases, and 60% do not have issues. Thank you very much. So, we're interesting. Thank you about this one. So, 
for the assembly process, there's a challenge to handle thinner boards. So from our side, we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, co uh, possibilities for assembling processes, and I will show you this one. At first, what we can do is to use a FA4 solder carrier. So we glue the delivery panel on an FA4, perhaps 0.8 millimeter, on a FA4 carrier. The delivery frame is glued and the piece, single PCB is not glued. But here we have a problem from the bottom side, you don't can use the assembly. So here you can don't use set uh, components on the bottom side. Here we have a solution about this one. At first, we can open the FA4 solder carrier, but then for the solder paste process, you need step pencils or dispenser technology. If this uh, other uh, option, if we can make it, is a delivery frame with a FA4 thiffermo. And so here we can make the frame from the delivery panel more thicker. And for the assembly process, the handling are more easy about this one. And so from the top and bottom side from the PCB is free for to set components. So for this all processes with assembly process, every time if we have question about this one, come to us and we will help you to look the completely process for the ready uh, component, uh, with the ready um, PCB for you. And follow, I will show you a small film. Here you can see the, uh, the snap out from the PCB to the solder carrier. So now I will start the movie. And I hope it's functioning. Yes, perfect. So here you see the very thin PCB and the solder carrier with the bits. And then after them, you can start it and then you can snap out the PCB from the solder carrier. I repeat it. So that goes very easy to snap out the PCB and then you can use the, PC the PCB very thin and the solder carrier is waste. Okay, so the summer for me is very important that you know the limits of standard microwire design is for PGA component pitch 0.4 millimeter. After this, we need more designs from PGA components with 0.3 millimeter. Here, it helps the slim HDI boards with less design parameters from pad size and smaller drill size from laser drilled microwire. And if these more or less up to go 0.3 millimeter PGA components, then we use the flex materials, but there's more thinner. And here we can use smaller pads and not more smaller laser drilled microwires about this technology. The challenge about this one is to handle very thin PCBs in the assembly process. Every time, don't hesitate to ask us and we will look with your assembly supplier or your himself to look what is possible in your processes, assembly processes, and so on. Solder carriers or other things is a possibility from our side. And for the next, we know that the components are go smaller and smaller. And here we look for FO4 materials with thinner materials. Here we can use the next step go less with the design parameters in pet size and roll size. Thanks a lot for your attention.